Tesla Powerwall 3, another video. We know we've done a lot of these recently, but this one's a little bit different because we're getting the same question all the time. Should I DC couple or AC couple my Tesla Powerwall 3? Well, right now we're gonna cover everything and give you all the answers you need. Before we answer that question, let's just go over the stats of the product one more time. So this has got 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable storage capacity. It's got a built-in solar inverter that can take up to 20 kilowatt of PV over three strings. And it has an AC coupled solution, which enables the power wall to charge at five kilowatts. And lastly, it also has the power to supply your home with up to 11 kilowatts of power continuously from that storage cell. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about AC coupling, DC coupling, or even doing both. And to make this a little bit easier, we're gonna take the cover off this power wall to show you the inbuilt inverters and how you would wire it in the various scenarios. So let's get this cover off now. So this is the cover off our power wall and right in front of me here on the right hand side, this is the DC connection points. Now, quick caveat here, this is actually a US spec power wall because on the UK power wall, there would be another little additional um, connection point here pre-wired because on the US model, you, have, you can have up to six strings, but on the UK, you only get three. So how would you DC connect a power wall or DC couple a power wall. Well, you would take your solar panels on the roof, you would string them up to the appropriate number and you would run those DC cables off the roof straight in to the actual power wall. And like we said, you can have up to three strings. So you could have maybe 30 panels, you could have 10 uh, panels per string and you could run three strings down or you might have a couple of panels where maybe you've got a roof that's east and west and a small south array you want to split that up so you're always keeping the same orientation on the same string now there are various advantages for dc coupling a power wall one of them is cost because we don't need to buy an additional inverter we can literally run our dc power off the roof straight in and behind here is our DC inverter. So all solar panels produce energy in DC, but our homes use AC. Energy is also stored in DC. So another benefit of a power wall would be that panels from the roof produce DC current. This comes down. And if we've got any space left in our capacity, then that DC current can go straight into those cells and charge them up. You're not got to convert it and therefore you don't suffer any conversion losses. When you do need power from that battery, this inverter will take it from DC, convert it to AC and send it out of this side. This is the AC coupled side here on the left. So AC coupling, means that you don't wire the DC solar panels straight into the power wall. You're converting that energy elsewhere. Now you can do that either via a microinverter. So if you've got a microinverter system on your roof with 10, 12 panels or whatever, these are converting DC locally, which means AC comes off the roof. We can't wire AC into a DC connector so we wire the AC on this side of the power wall. And likewise, if you've got a string inverter, you can also use that AC output to connect onto your power wall. But what if you don't have solar and you just wanna charge up on a cheap tariff? You can still do that here, but you would AC connect it, or AC couple it rather. So connect it to the grid here on the left-hand side the inverter will convert it to DC, that will be stored. And when you need it to power your home or appliances, it will be pulled up from the DC cells, converted back to AC and sent back out to your fuse board to power your home. So that is the main difference. You're either gonna have your solar panels wired, DC coupled over here, or if your AC coupling panels you're gonna connect it on the left-hand side on the AC side, 
you could actually do both. So AC coupling and DC coupling, when would you do this? Well, you would do it on the majority of installations because most people are gonna to wanna to charge their power wall overnight with cheap electricity, even if they have a DC coupled solar solution. But there are other cases where this becomes relevant. Now, one of them is because of the outcome of a recent technical bulletin from Tesla around optimizers. So if you have a roof where it has shading, sometimes you can use something called an optimizer to prevent one panel bringing the rest of the array down. And it does this by essentially tricking the other panels into pretending it's not got a problem, don't reduce your power, I'm okay. Tesla's inverters are super intelligent and they have something called arc fault detection. So it's constantly looking to see if there's ever gonna be a problem with any of these high voltage DC panels. And if there is, it will shut down immediately. The problem with optimizers is that the Tesla reads the optimizer as an arc fault. So it will constantly shut down and restart that string. So don't install optimizers with your power wall. If you do have shading issues, then you're gonna to wanna to install microinverters, AC couple the ones that have the issues, and again, wire them in on this side, and you can still run the rest of the roof, which is unaffected by shade, straight in to your DC coupled side of your Tesla Powerwall 3. That's it. Just remembered something else, which is, super important about when you AC couple and DC couple a power wall and that is technically you would have more power to supply your home because if you think about it if you had 10 of these microinverters on your roof producing three kilowatt you could AC couple that to the power wall you could power your home with three kilowatt of PV and then you could power your home with up to 11 kilowatt from the actual power wall so that would be a theoretical of like 14 kilowatts. Whereas if you DC couple only and run it all through the power wall, then you're always gonna be limited by this 11 kilowatt inverter, which is still pretty impressive because 11 kilowatt compared to your average inverter, which is like five, you're probably not gonna fall short unless you've got a heat pump. So we hope that was useful in giving you some further information around DC coupling, AC coupling, or doing both for your Tesla Powerwall 3. Now this logic applies pretty much to any hybrid inverters because you can usually accept DC into the inverter and you can also connect it on the AC side for off-peak charging and also exporting power to your home or the grid. But it's a common question that comes up all the time. We noticed it, especially at the solar show we did at the weekend. So if you've got any further questions, then leave a comment below. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Heatable YouTube channel for more content around batteries, solar systems, tariffs, and home heating solutions.